Okay, let's talk about the Texas Educator Certification Exam. And the exam we're going to be talking about here is the four, uh, grades 4 through 8 mathematics exam. And the test code there is 115. And we're going to take a look at a practice problem here in a second. But let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. And I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, so I know what it's like to uh, take these certification exams and teach in the classroom. I have a degree in math and a master's degree. Um, so yes, it's a lot of education and hard work to even get yourself in the classroom. And um, you know, one of the things I do with these videos is really try to give pass on the best advice um, I can offer uh, fellow teachers as you're entering uh, this you know uh, career of teaching, which is exciting, challenging, and rewarding. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, this particular exam and the math that's going to be on it. So you're going to be dealing with grades four through eight, and at least in terms of what you're going to be teaching. But the exam itself is going to be, um, you know, testing you on math that's far beyond the grade level that you're going to be dealing with. Okay, I would classify the math that's on this exam as kind of like advanced high school level mathematics. So you're going to have to know the considerable amount of math to do well on this exam, okay? And if you're studying for it, if you're not quite sure how to approach it, I actually offer an excellent test prep course uh, for this exam. I'll leave the link to that in the description of this video. But what I have here for you is a problem, okay? Just a high school level algebra problem that you should be able to handle, okay? So, um... This is definitely the level of math that you're going to need to know for this exam. So what I'd like you to do is, uh, if you got a moment, take out a piece of paper and a pencil, just pause the video, see if you can simplify this expression, okay? And uh, of course, I'm going to solve it, and then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, so hopefully you, uh, you know, played around with this, and, you know, you actually got it right. But what are we dealing with here? Well, we're dealing with powers and exponents, so it's really, really... Uh, important in his various properties um, that have to deal with powers and exponents. So let's see what you remember here. Let's go ahead and start simplifying this. We'll work on this numerator first, okay? So I'm going to tackle this. And there's um, actually various different ways you can approach or various steps you can take and still get the right answer. So if you did this in a different way, but you still uh, got the right answer, that's perfectly fine. All right, let's go ahead and just take this... Um, uh, term here. What's this equivalent to? Well, I got to I have to distribute this two here, all right, to everything on the inside. So this is going to be three squared, all right, times x to the fourth power. Okay, so we got to be very very careful here when we're uh, distributing this. Now I'll write this as nine. Three squared is nine here in a second. But I just want to go ahead and just um, you know point out to here specifically. Now if you went like this, three x squared, and you're squaring it, and you said, okay, that's going to be times itself, so that's 9x to the fourth, that's okay as well, okay? But you really need to know these properties of exponents and uh, powers. So let's move on to this other uh, term. So I have 3x to the negative sixth power, and we'll just kind of whittle this problem down little by little. Let's go ahead and take on this denominator here. So same thing, I'm going to distribute this 2. I'll do it this way. Okay, this outside 2. So this will be 2 squared, and that'll be x to the negative 4th power. Okay? Be very, very careful here. So easy to make an error. All right, and that's kind of why I'm doing a problem like this. This is 2 squared, x to the negative 4th power. Okay, so this is where we're at. Now, I'm going to actually, you know, I got many more steps to simplify this down, but I wanted to just see, okay, you know, did you get to this, you know, get this far in the problem? Okay, let's just double check our denominator. Okay, that's good. And this is good. All right, so now I'm confident that, you know, I uh, did this step correctly. And this is a hallmark that you need to teach your students in mathematics is always double check your work before you invest you know, so much, you know, effort into your problem. For example, let's say you got a big problem like this and you're, you're, you're just going, it's, it's like, you know, 20 steps, but you made a little error here, but because you weren't double checking, all of this is wrong. But if you caught your error here, then you would have corrected it. Okay, so just 
a big part of math, a huge part of math. Matter of fact, maybe the number one thing math is is managing the work. Okay, and that's what you're going to have to demonstrate as a teacher to your student, not just knowing the rules and and the procedures and all the theorems and all that kind of good stuff. It's really managing the work. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on with this problem. And let's go ahead and just write, uh, I'll kind of write this a little bit easier. We'll kind of tighten this up. So 3 squared is going to be 9x to the 4th times 3x to the negative 6. And then our, t our denominator is 2 squared, so we'll write that as 4 x to the negative fourth. Okay, so now let's move forward here. So this that's going to deal with this here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just multiply the numbers, the coefficients here together. All right. So let's see here. Three uh, nine times three is twenty-seven, and now I have these powers here. I have x to the fourth times x. Uh, to uh, the negative 6. So this is all multiplication. This is 9 times x to the 4th times 3 times x to the negative 6. So you can add these exponents because it's the same base of x. Okay, so this is going to be x to the negative 2 power, x to the negative squared. Okay? All right, so now i got my denominator down here. It's still 4 x to the negative fourth power. Okay, so again, you may have taken some other steps, but now we got to figure out what to do here. Now, let's just talk about the numbers part of this. So this is a fraction, and we're not going to be able to reduce this fraction, so we're just going to leave this 27 over 4 right here. What we have to do is figure out what's going to go on right here. Now, this is a couple different uh, there's a couple different ways we can approach this problem. I'm going to um, uh, remind you that when you have negative powers, they become positive when you, when you put that whole power on the opposite side of the fraction bar. So in other words, I can move this x to the negative fourth up to the numerator, so that becomes x to the positive fourth. Okay, so the sign of the exponent will change. So I'll do the same thing. I'll move this x to the negative two down, and the denominator gives me x squared. Now, you could use um, the division rules, which is a to the m over a to the n, or a to the m minus n. You could subtract, whoops, a minus n. You could subtract the exponents, and that's fine. You'll still get to the same point, but I wanted just to illustrate this here because this is a, um, a rule that students typically don't use enough or they forget about negative exponents. Now, we can clearly see here I have x to the fourth and I have x squared. So I'm just going to be able to, you know, if you think about it, x to the fourth is x times x times x, right, over x squared, or x and x. So you're going to be left with x squared in the numerator. So our final answer will be 27x squared over 4, okay? All right, so if you got this correct, I commend you, okay? Again, there is different ways to get to this final answer, okay? You could... You could have um, moved uh, powers around earlier. So when you're doing this, it's really about knowing um, uh, all the rules and then managing the problem. Okay, of course you want to find the most efficient way and that kind of um, efficient way to get the solution, but that just will come through experience. But the most important thing is that you actually were able to get this right. Now, this problem, this is just a basic high school level problem. This is like high school algebra one. Something for sure you're going to need to know for this uh, grade uh, four through eight math exam. Okay, so if you found this difficult, it's a good indication that you have a lot of work to do. If you found this easy, that's by no means that you're uh, ready because there's a lot of other math that's on this exam. Okay, so hopefully the problem was just, you know, quick, you know, give you some quick feedback on where you may stand in your math. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Um, I've been on YouTube for many, many years, have hundreds and hundreds of videos. I think it could help you out. So hopefully you consider subscribing. I'm posting content all the time. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, are you new to teaching? Are you, were you, you know, an elementary teacher and now you want to just focus in on math? Um, you know, any feedback is good feedback. So I try to read as, as many of the comments as I get, but, um, Again, I want to go ahead and just let you know that I have an excellent math prep course for this grades uh, 4 through 8 uh, math. 
All my courses have taken me literally years and years to build. So it's extremely comprehensive, and I think it's something that you'll find very beneficial. So you can go to take a look at that course by clicking the link in the description of this video. But um, I will say this much, um, as a fellow math teacher or soon-to-be math teacher, um, I love teaching math, you know. Uh, and I started off in high school, and then I switched it to middle school. And I used to think that, oh, high school math, you're doing more advanced math. You know, it'd be easier to teach middle school. But every level is challenging, okay? And it's crazy in middle school, too, that sixth graders are completely different than seventh graders, and seventh graders are completely different than eighth graders. It's just one of these things that you kind of learn through experience. So every level of teaching, you know, first grade, say it doesn't make a difference. It's all challenging and all rewarding. But uh, as you know, you're going to have to put uh, the effort in just to even become a teacher and, and pass these certification exams uh, as part of what you need to do. So over study, you're going to need to know this material anyways. And uh, hopefully this little video uh, helped you out. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your teaching career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.